Listen to this sage advice. If you've bought a putter and you're putting well with it, don't change it, ever. I bought this putter when I started playing golf seriously four years ago and it has never left the bag. And now listen to this idiot. I kept my putter head, uh, the only putter I've ever had. It's a Scotty 5.5 Futura, uh, but I added this uh, stability shaft to it. More on that in a minute. But in the meantime, here I am playing my last round in the Bay Area before heading down to Southern California, where I was hoping for some better weather and indeed found it. So be sure to follow along for my golf from down there. But today we're playing our last round in a lot of cold and wet, and I came down here from Canada hoping for good weather. And I thought this was America, but it turns out it was still very Vancouver-like here. So I decided to tee it a bit forward for the final round, owing to the conditions. And just like last time, we're starting on the back nine. And just like last time, I'm finding that any ball in the rough is really difficult for me to advance. And here I am hacking my way up this first hole. Even this short bump and run with a seven iron is getting stuck. And this is one of my first rounds with the stability shaft putter. And we missed the first short putt a hair left. Take note of that. On two, we hit our first golf shot of the day, and we have about 10 or 12 feet for birdie, and we miss it short and left. Take note of that. This is a bit of a scuzzy one, but it does wind up in the middle of the fairway. But if you followed my last video, you've seen that I've done some really lousy things with three woods lately. And it seems that all of the long clubs are hooking and all of the irons are fading. So here we're just playing for bogey. And we missed that putt to the left. Take note. This is my first decent drive of the day. But playing into wind, I grab an extra club here, and I try to step on it, and wind up hitting another nasty hook. You'll see some downed trees throughout the course. San Francisco took a beating from a few rainstorms in late October, but they still kept Harding in pretty good shape. That lag putt isn't terrible but note that it misses a bit to the left. Only a few months ago, I really had my driver working, but with my mega inside takeaway, the miss when my timing is bad is to the left, and you'll see that I suffer from it again today. I was forced to pitch back into the fairway, and I'm not quite sure what that wedge was. This is a much better effort, and we'll have about five feet now, but we miss to the left. Speaking of to the left, whoever makes the most clever Beyonce reference in the comments, I will appreciate you. That drive is missed to the left, and this approach is missed to the left. I thought I hit that wedge decently, but it actually rolls right past the pin. And that's the first putt we haven't missed left, and we tidy up for bogey. As I'm walking on to this tee box, I'm mostly thinking about this. That's Morikawa's drive from this exact tee box, and my best drive from this tee box leaves me 75 short. I'll take that. And this wedge is good, and I'll have about 12 feet here for birdie. But not quite. On eight, we take an ugly swing, but we get away with it, and this one will get on the green. And we miss the lag putt a little bit to the left. This is a strong contender for my worst drive of the day. I'm left with 205 in around a bend, and that's as best as I can do with a four wood. And even this pitch is pretty lousy. I wind up way on the front of the green here. It's a bit by the hole, and that one misses to the left. I talk a lot on the channel about staying in a good headspace when the game isn't going your way. Well, I'm a 7 handicap, and for the third time in four rounds, I'm 9 over through 9. But I'm not going to pout about it. I'm going to harness that goldfish memory and get over each ball with no bad feelings from what's happened previously. On the back nine, I don't start with a great drive. But for the first time all day, I hit a good pitch and manage to get up and down. 
A question for those of you who have played Harding. Am I the only one who finds a few of these par fours on the front nine, which I'm playing as the back nine, to be basically carbon copies of the same hole? <laughs> My best shot of the whole day. There's a great bad shot, followed by a missed putt to the left. This is a great little par three playing uphill, and I grab a lot of club, but I fat it a bit, and I'll have a long, long lag putt here. I'd say pushing on about 80 feet, and I leave it at least 15 short before missing this putt to the left. This par five is a huge dog leg left, and wouldn't you know it, my first driver missed to the right. This one was out of some very thick rough, so I'm not disappointed with that. And from about 180 here, this one does manage to catch a piece of green. This lag putt is a bit short, and I'll have about three feet here. I'm not even going to say it anymore. I mentioned that some of the par fours on this nine play the same. And this hole and the second hole in the back, I couldn't tell you the difference between them. And one way to avoid these horrible missed putts is by putting them close enough that even when you pull them a bit, they find the hole. On 15, it's another scuzzy one that does wind up in the fairway. And grabbing an extra club here, I do find the green. And maybe I'm just fully mentally defeated by a lousy flat stick all day, because it's a three putt with a miss to the left. On 16, I hit probably my best drive of the day. And this is my favorite pitch and putt number, but it doesn't quite find the front of the green today. And this putt through the fringe leaves me with some work to do. And guess which way this one misses. It's funny how the golf gods work, because this shot on 17 leaves me with about a 45 foot lag putt. And after all of the cruelty the golf gods dealt me, they seem to want to keep me coming back with a good lag putt here. There's a smother hook on 18, followed by a tippy toppy. And at this point I'd really like to get to Southern California. We'll have about 12 feet for a par save here. And wouldn't you know it, those golf gods are going to give me just one today. So that's an 85 that felt like it could have spiraled into a 90. And before going down to Palm Springs, I stop in a golf shop and have them look at my putter. And what do they tell me? But this putter is four degrees upright compared to my normal gamer. 